Hi, hello, Wombly here, and to start, I just want to say thanks to y'all for the warm welcome already, and today I wonder about loading and unloading filament on the Snapmaker U1. So to start, let's speed run the disclaimer card from last time. I'm a beta tester with his own full-time job. This is a pre-production Snapmaker U1. The final unit and software will likely change from what you see here. I report bugs to Snapmaker, but there is some stuff I can share with you. So this isn't buying advice, this is just a preview. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, shameless plug to go back and check out the Ocarina video from earlier this week. Uh, but now here's the rub. So I had recorded a nice look at the box, me trying not to throw my back out, checking out the packaging, flipping through the setup manual, stuff that was included, how to mount the heads without breaking anything, and then some family stuff came up. And you know what? That's okay, because since then, the real Sam Prentice, Tech Napa, probably others too, came along and did much more detailed and better lit unboxing reviews than I would have made. So check out their videos, links down below. But there's one thing from setting this up I don't think I've seen shown in detail yet, and that's this filament management system for the U1. And it uses these feeders on each side as part of it. Now, by now I really wanted to be showing you guys like more prints and stuff, but there's this recurring question from the hardcore printer homies in the Snapmaker community. Uh, can you bypass those filament feeder things? Uh, to that, my answer is, should you bypass those feeder things? Now, I, I know, sorry to be a Socratic jerk, because listen, I, I understand where the question, question is coming from. I really do. I just think, like, hear me out. There's some stuff going on here, I think, adds a lot to the experience using the U1. Uh, so we have this graphic uh, from the Kickstarter page, and it doesn't say a lot, right? Just filament management. But like, what does that mean? <laughs> What's the experience actually like, right? Because at first I was just like, hmm. And then as I used it, I was like, ah, and it starts with the filament loading, which, and maybe I'll touch on this towards the end, I think is really just the tip of the iceberg when they say filament management. So when I first set this up and walked up to the U1 with four rolls of filament to load, I had this dawning revelation. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, the typical loading sequence looks a bit like this. There's lots of steps. Uh, some printers make you do all of this very much by hand, and others will have varying levels of automation. But one way or the other, you're doing this to get a tool loaded. And so now here I am with four rolls of filament, and it occurs to me I never even thought what having to stand around doing that four times might be like. So after first trying my own very clever feeding method, I put a spool on only to learn here is my filament feeder. Can I trick it with number three first? Whoa, hi. Snapmaker did think about it. So uh, first it's important to say as always, this is a preview of a feature that may change for the final product. Uh, for example, here we see some buttons to manually trigger the feature we're gonna have a look at. And there I should also say, just to clarify on past previews you may have seen, just a couple things. Firstly, what I'm showing here is not quite the same as the original firmware. It's changed a little bit already based on feedback. And second, I'll just say that we had this feature from the start. As we're going to see, some of it was a little counterintuitive, um, being used to 3D printing already. It's just a little bit of a different paradigm for what is kind of a unique printer. There's just not a lot of tool changers out there yet. Uh, lastly, yes, if you need, you can still release and do this all fully manually if that's what you're into. Uh, but now we are going to do this backwards. Since I already had filament loaded, so first we're going to do the easy part of unloading, and then we're going to go back and put the spools back on. For the unfamiliar, unloading is a little bit easier. It's just kind of in reverse. The extruder heats. You may give a push in or out before pulling back on uh, some printers that may be cut at the extruder. Um, but this is also potentially not fun if you have to do all of it yourself for four tool heads. Um, but yeah, that's all here too. So once we get the spools off, we'll go back running through the loading sequence after. Here's our U1 ready to be unloaded. You can see here, we go to the menu. Simple enough, this is the uh, filament menu. Give that a tap. And you can see the rolls I have loaded, some black, yellow, pink, and white from some testing. You can see a couple of those were Snapmaker filaments with a little eyeball saying, I know what those are. Uh, yeah, so to unload, it's simple enough. Uh, to get it started, I hit unload. I pick which ones I want to unload, and we'll just do all four. And tap unload. Now, from there, it'll get to work starting off with just homing the motors. 
and then we'll go through the routine of picking each one of the tools, heating it up. There goes the first one. And you can see there it's heating up the first nozzle. And now we don't have to stand around and wait. I can go make myself a cup of coffee and uh, come back when it's done. And that is it. So just a few minutes and now we see on the screen all tool heads unloaded. Collect filament. Okay, let's do that. All right, so next up we're going to, as it said, manually unload. Uh, simple enough. So you do want to rewind. Keeping a finger at the uh, filament holder until it catches there. You can see it coming down the tube. I'm going to reach a little funny, so hopefully you can see these spool holders are designed to pop off. So, at least on this early production model. Um, so I do recommend you put a thumb right here on the hub to kind of pull and push off the hub. Because these are designed to pop off. In case you want to put some dryer boxes here or something. And there we go. We got one roll. Set that aside. Same for this guy. As soon as one is unloaded and it goes to the next one, you can start unloading the other filaments if you're in a hurry. Uh, once it's done with that tool, it's not a problem. And another nice little touch. You'll see I got these two spools off completely out of the feeder, but I still have these two rolls on. It does recognize as you're taking the spools off too, which, you know, should work that way, but nice touch. So now, as you can see, I got the other couple spools off. Nothing up my sleeves or Bowden tubes, including filament. So uh, now let's take a look at actually reloading the same filament. Now, for this part, you will see you don't necessarily you have it. You do get a point. I don't know how well that shows up on video here. I'm on man manual focus mode. Uh, you will get a little wispy on the end. It is pretty sharp. But I like to have a nice clean sharp, so I always cut my filament 45 degrees or so for harder filaments, maybe more perpendicular if it's more shallow, but I get a nice point on there, and this is where the feeder system comes in really handy. Let me see if I can manage to do this with a handy cam. Um, let me get the spool onto the hub, and we'll switch to handy cam mode. You can see I have my filament. So this is where the feeder helps us out. I'm going to shove it in the feeder. The light blinks. And there it goes. Now you might notice right away that it is not all the way to the extruder. That is okay. We're going to come back to that. Right now we're just getting the filament into the system and this thing does all the shoving for you so you don't have to worry about that just yet. Okay, now here we are. I've got four spools reloaded in no particular order, and you'll see two out of my four were Snapmaker PLA with an RFID. A couple weren't. It's going to ask me if I don't tell it. These are high-speed PLA. I'm just going to tell them it's Snap-speed PLA. Don't tell Snapmaker that it isn't. And the color on spool one's black. Oops, did that already. Save. Uh, oops, I didn't tell it this guy. Filament details, that one is the pink. And we'll say that that's also high speed PLA, save. And there we go. So now it knows what all four of them are. We haven't actually loaded the filament yet. All we've done so far is mount these spools. So they do have a load mode in the works at least. And what does that look like? Well, the printer is capable of loading filament for you. So I can pick which rolls that I want to load and say, go get them. And now you can see it is working on detaching the tool head. 
So this is about to spin up a whole sequence, uh, starting off with just homing the head so that we can do the tool picks. And it is going to kind of do the reverse of what we saw with unloading, uh, where it will now go through and take turns heating the heads to do a little extrusion, purge out what was ever left from the last filament. And that is where, again, you do get one of your poops. So you can see the uh, some unloading poops. And we're about to see it make some loading poops. But again, this is uh, those rare instances where we do actually get a poop. And what you just saw there was that it pulled forward so that the feeder could actually pulse uh, more filament down into the extruder. So that is where we said, you don't have to panic if you see you put the filament on and it doesn't make it all the way, it might be okay. So there is uh, some nice stuff here where, I don't know if you can see the extruder gears here. Uh, it will try to do a little extrusion. If it didn't make it, that's okay. The feeder will pulse a little bit and try again. And so that means you don't have to stand around. Oop, there it goes, it's extruding. You don't have to stand around waiting for the extruders to heat up and then try to help them. Um, there's some pretty nice, uh, some pretty nice convenience here in terms of really using the feeders so you don't have to stand around with this stuff. Uh, of course I'm going to, because I'm filming it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll see if I can get a close-up uh, when this thing comes back uh, with one of the ones on the right and you can we can try to take a look at this thing in action. And there we have it. All done. Automatic loading success. One, two, three, four. Awesome. Boop. So I've dragged this out to give kind of a full picture, but I think the effect is pretty great because what did we actually do? So for loading, we mounted the spool and gave it to the feeders. Uh, we might need to like ID the filament if it doesn't have the little tag. And maybe, more on that in a minute, maybe we push buttons telling it to load the filament. Um, then for unloading, we just pushed the buttons and when it was done, came back to rewind the spools. And I think this is really slick because again, Snapmaker's saying that the U1 will have this filament management. And like I said, this is just kind of one example of that. Uh, for example, they also said there's going to have this auto backup mode. And I have seen even more subtle things, uh, with this integration. So for example, on the loading, we showed how to manually trigger an automatic load. Now. This could very much change in the future, I suppose, but I've more than once just fed the filament and identified it, but not actually told it to load it. So the U1 knew about the unloaded filament in the feeder, and when the next print started, it just went ahead and did the automatic loading to the extruder for me, no questions asked, uh, just as the print got started, and, and that's maybe even cooler. Uh, now, I would be remiss if I said this is all sunshine and roses and the system works perfectly as we've been throwing the real world at it, but for me, it has mostly just worked, even when I screwed up, and I think that's cool as heck. Uh, so at any rate, even as we keep giving feedback, I think they really have the right idea here, and I'm glad they're trying to put the polish on this. So yeah, that's it. Them's the basics of the auto-loading and unloading. Now, before I wrap up, I must right a grave wrong. If you saw that last video where we made the ocarina, everyone's been flaming me for not giving a toot, so please sit back, relax, as I play for you a little lullaby.
Thank you. Thank you. What do you say, Simon? Oh, Simon, you're too kind, really. <laughs> you're all too kind. Sorry, were you uh, expecting a different lullaby? Now, if you found this video interesting, <laughs> well, you're going to love what's still to come. So until then, don't forget to feed your 3D printer and thanks for watching.